Hey, so I'm um, Brian, this is Alex, Brian, and Steven, and we're going to present to you our game, Rabbit Ranchers. So this is a title screen. Thank you for watching this is that. So just as an outline, I'm going to really quickly go through uh, the overview of the game. Uh, we're going to go into mechanics, AI, and we're going to have a short demo of the game in its current state. So, um, just sort of as an overview, what our game is about is that there's a bunch of rabbits, and you're a rabbit rancher, and so you have to manipulate the rabbits to eventually uh, own the territory of the other ranchers who are on the map with you. And this is just, you know, some plot ideas we're going around. Yeah, so, this isn't pre rendered CGI or anything, this is actually in game. And uh, <laughs> this is what you would expect to see if you were playing our game. And I've highlighted some of the different objects. That are on the screen at any given time. We've got the rabbits, we've got some of the effects, we've got your resource supply in the top right corner, and then we have uh, the ranch house. Both players have a ranch house. There's one in the top left, and there's one down there. You can't really see it. It's hidden behind a huge mass of rabbits. And so the, the way the game works is I've sort of split up the gameplay into four stages. So step one is you've got to get rabbits. And so to get rabbits, you take one rabbit another rabbit, and together they make more rabbits. So when you have a bunch of rabbits, the next thing you need to do is get paid. So if you get money, you basically, if you have, ter the, this represents territory that you own, so a dark green. So you put rabbits on top of your territory, and it gives you more, whatever you might call it, but money. Step three is to get skills. So once you have some money, you choose the abilities that you want to use, and hopefully you build a strategy. And you combine that devastating um, ability against your enemies, or in order to sort of manipulate and control and manage your own rabbit population. So there's offensive and defensive things going on here. It's pretty complex. Uh, step four is to win. And in order to win, you need to take Expand your territory a one tile at a time until eventually you've bought the territory underneath your opponent's ranch house. And then once that happens, you win the game. So that's that's really how you play. And um, pass on to Ryan. All right. So I'm going to go over quickly some of the different abilities you can use in the game and how you use them. All right. So the first one, this is like your core ability. This is the one you're going to be using constantly throughout the game, and it's pretty fitting. It's the carrot. So the carrot. Uh, as you'd expect, it attracts rabbits to its location. So when you're playing, you can drop carrots anywhere on the map, and any rabbit within a certain vicinity is going to be attracted to that, uh, that carrot. So you can use that for a variety of things. You can use it to promote breeding, because the way our breeding works in the game is it's not just like if you have two rabbits and you put them together, another rabbit will pop out, or another bunch of rabbits will pop out. It's, it's based on like proximity to other rabbits. So if you have one rabbit with, that's close to a bunch of rabbits, that rabbit is going to be more likely to breed with the other rabbits. Same with all the other rabbits. So basically, if you have a whole bunch of rabbits clustered together, they're all going to be more likely to breed. So that's how the breeding works. So carrots are a good way to bunch all your rabbits together and promote breeding. Uh, additionally, let's say that you've got a territory border with uh, the enemy player. Um, one thing you can do is if, they, if they're doing a poor job of managing their rabbits and they get too close to your territory, you can use a, like a chain of carrots to take them over to your side. So you're going to pay for their rabbits. Although, I'm hesitant to say their rabbits because they're only their rabbits as long as they're on their side. All the rabbits are technically neutral unless they're on someone's territory. Um, another thing you can do is use uh, carrots to contain diseases. Like the picture we showed earlier, we have an item that can uh, disease rabbits. So let's say they disease a small portion of your population. You can use carrots to lure that disease population away from the rest of the population and isolate them so it won't spread and kill your entire rabbit population. Second basic ability we have is the garlic ability, which I don't know why <laughs> our rabbits are afraid of garlic, <laughs> but they are. They're really afraid of garlic. So uh, it's the exact opposite of the carrot that we repulse from the garlic. So discourage breeding use, uses offensively, let's say, your uh, opponent is being really greedy and just all their care, all their uh, all his rabbits all in one pile and they're just breeding like crazy. You just throw out a garlic and it will spread out like crazy. And so that's one way you can discourage people clumping all together. 
Another thing you do is split up herds of rabbits. So like, let's say you want, you have a big clump of rabbits, and you want to dissect that into a couple herds so that the opponent can't do what I just said. Like, you know, but if you have all your rabbits in one bucket, it's really easy for the enemy to disrupt that in many different ways. So you can split up your rabbits. It's, just, it's kind of like a dissection tool. Um, next thing is the predator. This is used for, it can actually be used for two different things. You can use it for hurting your rabbits or for killing your enemy rabbits. So basically, like the, it's like a, a giant moving garlic. So it's going to chase down the closest rabbit, and all the rabbits, once it gets close enough to them, are going to flee like crazy, just run all over the place. So you can use this, it's a little, it's kind of hard to control because you never know exactly what's going to happen. So let's say your opponent has a big herd of rabbits near your border, but not that close, so it wouldn't be very efficient to use a whole bunch of chain of carrots. And also, the, the enemy could easily just use his own carrots to take them back. So you can use a predator and put the predator on the enemy side of uh, the map. And we'll display all these examples on the next question. And uh, so the predator will start chasing them towards your territory, and you can get all the rabbits over to your territory. But then the predator will start killing them, so it's kind of a double-edged sword. So, <laughs> I mean, hopefully we'll kill all of them, you'll get some of them. Oh, speak up. No, Oh, speak up. Okay. Alright, uh, oops. Alright, I'm going to speed up a little bit. Alright, next ability is uh, population control. It's a birth control bomb. Basically, when you place this item on the map, after three seconds, it's going to explode and sterilize every rabbit or fix every rabbit in an area. So once they're sterilized, they're sterilized for good. There's no going back. So, uh, yeah, that's what that does. So it's obvious what you use that offensively on your enemy. If they're clumping all the rabbits together, you punish them by throwing down a birth control bomb. Um, another really big uh, ability is the diseased carrot. Now, this, like the, unlike the other carrot, this carrot will not attract the other rabbits. They, they kind of know that it's, it's kind of messed up, I think. I mean, look at it. But, uh, <laughs> but anything that touches, any rabbit that touches this carrot is going to be diseased. And essentially, this means they're going to die, not at a set time, but they're going to be basically an increased chance to die over time. So like usually they die around seven seconds or something like that. In addition, uh, diseased carrot or diseased rabbit will also has a chance to affect other rabbits. So like breeding, if you're clumping all your rabbits together and the opponent throws down a diseased carrot, then chances are your entire population is going to be diseased if you're clumping up too much. So you want to spread out your population so you can control that. Um, and the last ability we're going to we, we haven't really talked exactly how the capturing territory works. But essentially, the map is split into grids, and you can, say, push into a territory if it's bordering your territory. And so you can steal the opponent's territory, which we'll go into in the demo. And uh, the walls are basically to protect your territory. If you have a wall on your territory, the opponent tries to push it. Instead of taking your territory, it will just destroy the wall. So you can kind of delay things and do stuff, do stuff like that. Um, and just going over a basic strategy really quick. Uh, apparently, I'm going too slow. So uh, some your, uh, goals while you're playing would be to uh, one pro your priority would be to keep all your rabbits on your territory. It's cheap to just throw down carrots and make sure you're maintaining your own rabbit population on your side. Then you want to try and capture new territory. It's a little more expensive, but the more territory you own, the more you can spread out your rabbits, the more the easier it is for you to persuade enemy rabbits to your side. It just makes sense to own the bottom map. Um, then you want to worry about disrupting the enemy. Uh, so if, you, if you're kind of handling yourself pretty well, then you want to start worrying about the enemy messing him up. And the last thing is if once it gets into the middle late stages of the game, your territory, both of your players are going to start pushing out and they're going to have borders. And so that's the point when you want to start worrying about, you know, if he's not managing his rabbits well and they're getting close to your side, that's when you start, want to start worrying about luring them over to your side. So you're benefiting from him. Uh, quick counters. Um, obviously, garlic and uh, carrots are interchangeable. They counter each other. So garlic is a little more expensive, so, you, it's, uh, so the defender has the advantage with carrots. Um, then obviously garlic can counter bombs. If you see an opponent throw down a bomb into a big cluster of your rabbits, you throw down garlic onto your own rabbits, they'll spread out and they'll essentially dodge the bomb. Uh, and then diseased carrot can be countered by uh, intelligent use of both carrots and garlic. You can dissect your population and, and kind of contain it. Uh, so next we're going to go on to Steven and Alejandro for the AI. All right, there are two elements to the AI, the finite state machine and the influence map. The Finite state machine is what I'll be covering. Uh, this is a brief review. I might skip this as we're running a little long time. I don't hear over what a finite state machine is. There are states you move between them. <laughs> and they have different strategies based on what the state is that relates to whatever state you go to. Now, um, the way you have implemented it so far is there's an intro set of states and a mid game to late game set of states. The intro set 
is the opening move of Stan. It includes things like gathering your rabbits at the beginning, making sure they're on your territory so you're getting a good income. That's what the AI does, rather. And it, it's pretty simple for the intro stuff, so that's working reasonably well now. Here's a simple 